Yeah, what's going on guys? This is Spartan here. Guys, we've got an awesome and important video for you guys today. So make sure you give this a watch to the end. I'm going to keep this sweet, short, to the point. But this is honestly one of the most important videos you can watch if you're considering TRT or if you're currently doing TRT. So guys, boom, I'm Seth Spartan. Let's get into three things, three big problems uh, and issues that you want to avoid when on TRT. And some of these might be more obvious than others, but Listen to what I'm about to say. I'm going to explain it and then break it down. So for those of you that have an extremely short attention span, I'm going to list them and then we're going to go bang, bang, bang right through them. So the three big mistakes people make when going on TRT or when on TRT is number one, the most obvious, should be the most obvious and the most common. You're not taking enough testosterone or, you know, HG, uh, HCG levels are too low, but the issue remains the same. Total testosterone is too low. Again, you can address that by taking more testosterone or you can address that by adding in something like HCG, although you don't want to go too, too high with the HCG either as that can cause issues. We'll talk about that in another video. But okay, so problem number one is total testosterone level is not high enough. Problem number two is estrogen level is too low. This is extremely common to, you know, doctors, clinics, they all make this, not every single one of them, but like, very commonly, they make the mistake of cranking up a patient's uh, AI dosage, a Rimidex or whatever they're having them uh, take with their HRT regimen. They crank the AI2 up and guess what? They crash the patient's uh, estrogen levels. Even though the testosterone level is great, they crash their estrogen level and guess what this makes you do? It makes you feel terrible, it makes you not sleep good, feel terrible, not sleep good, can give you headaches, um, but altogether, you know, you just feel like as uh, the new term I've been hearing, dog water. You feel like absolute dog water, okay? So, and I can confirm this because I've taken too much of an AI, lowered my estrogen. And it's interesting to know, guys, the, the symptoms of low testosterone, a lot of them actually you can have from low estrogen. So even if your testosterone is great, many clinics, many doctors give too much of an AI and they, cr and they lower the estrogen way too much. It's always better to be higher in the, in the estrogen range, then lower. Always, nine times out of 10. You'll sleep better, you'll feel better, and one huge problem with the AI is joint pain because lowering estrogen levels makes your joints hurt. Why? Because estrogen is responsible for what? Synovial fluid in your joints. We'll get into that more in a second. Problem number three is what? None other than mistake three is your spreading out your testosterone injections too far. You know, if you have, you know, this, this, this stuff should be obvious to people who have been on TRT for years, hopefully. But the issue is the longer you space out the injections, even if you go bigger dosages, right? What's going to happen? The, the uh, valleys and troughs are going to be what? They're going to be bigger and bigger. So the longer you space out your injection, even if total weekly testosterone dosage is the same, which it should be, what's going to happen? The longer you space out the injections, the bigger the spike, the bigger the trough. Now, the, the spikes aren't as big of a deal as the troughs because, you know, you'll maybe you'll need, a, you'll need a little less sleep. You'll have a little, excuse me, more estrogen or more estrogen. You'll have a little bit, little bit, you'll have a little bit, need a little bit less sleep, a little bit more energy. Forget what I said, estrogen, I misspoke there. But you'll you'll need a little less sleep. You'll have be more energetic. Uh, you know, you're, you're trained. You'll feel a little more, more hyped all the time, I want to say. Um, this can be good or bad, it doesn't really affect me, but the issue is the troughs. <laughs> During those troughs, if you're sp spacing out your injections too much, uh, you're going to have a lack of energy and you're just going to feel these up and downs. Now, what I personally recommend, and I'm, gonna rec I'm recommending this in my new book, Super Male Digital Editions out right now, uh, physical edition will be on Amazon very, very soon. Uh, Super Male, I talk about all this stuff, but having said that, guys, one thing you want to do, and this is my professional opinion, you want to do for most people every day or every other day. Now, for most people, I'm going to recommend every other day, okay? But for some people, it's not enough. If you look at the pharmacokinetics of both testosterone, sipinate, and anenthate, yes, half-life is technically right, seven, eight days. But the issue is, is that you still get a big, huge jump within the first two days, and then it goes down. So well, it's technically seven or eight days, if you just look at the pharmacokinetics, you still get a huge rush the two days and then it drops off very fast. So 
regardless on cypionate or anenthate, whatever your doctor's giving you depends on Europe versus US and all that. Uh, what you want to be doing is for the for the best, if you take into account, you know, the, the least trouble, the least time consuming, the least trouble and feeling the best, and I've done everything myself, guys, you want to do every other day. But for some people who are more sensitive to the up and down, I recommend every day. So what you're going to want to do is in terms of um, every other day dosing, as long as you're not fat, um, what I recommend doing is using a 29 gauge half inch insulin syringe for every other day. And um, you're gonna pin uh, basically in from the front of your shins to the outer shins. I'm gonna have to lay out the, the exact muscle. I'll do a, a video on best injection locations, or you can do right in the middle, the rectus femoris of the thigh. Do not do in your outer thigh because you can screw up your striations. Um, but okay, so guys, uh, those are the three big problems people make when they go on TRT or when they're planning to go on TRT. Number one was what? Total testosterone level is not high enough, either caused by their doctor just giving them way too little or by uh, their HCG dosage. If they're on HCG, they could bump it up a little bit by taking a little bit more. However, I highly recommend not going over um, 500 IU HCG every other day. I do not recommend going over that long term, okay? And this is Oh, that's a whole other video on medical studies and interactions in the testicles. So uh, you can bring up your total testosterone. Problem number one, total testosterone is too low. So either bring up your total testosterone level between 1,000 and 1,500 if you're an exception. And, you know, maybe you're a guy that your genetics just don't, you know, for some reason you just don't feel good. Fine, lower it. But if you want to be a male at your peak, 1,000 to 1,500 is what you need. Why? Because that's what you should be when you're a, if you're a healthy 18 year old. Okay. All right. So address that problem number two. We talked about what estrogen crashing too low. All you have to do to fix this is lower your AI dosage or even get off of it for a little bit. Okay. It's so much better to be higher in the range versus lower. Estrogen is directly correlated to how much. Uh, human growth hormone, your pituitary releases, okay? And this is why scientists were stumped when they found that patients given testosterone or anabolic steroids that do not convert into estrogen had way higher HGH versus ones that um, um, do not convert, such as Anavar, Anadrol, and such, okay? So uh, estrogen acts right on the pituitary gland, and if you have really low estrogen, you're not gonna release anywhere near as much HGH. If you have higher estrogen, you're gonna release more. Now, should should you let your estrogen go through the roof? No, but you wanna be at the top of the range versus the lower. You're gonna sleep better, feel better, be better, and your joints will not hurt. I talked about the synovial fluid. All right, problem number three, how to address it? Simply put, guys, do your injections more frequently. Same dosage per week, but you wanna do it more Boom, frequently, okay? So the best case scenario is every other day for probably 90% of people, okay? Every other day. That's what I'm doing now. When I was hardcore competition mode, I was doing every day with, uh, what was it? 29, or no, I was, when, I do, when I do everyday injections, I'm doing 30 gauge, 5 16 microdose uh, anywhere around my shin to my outside shin, just easiest uh, to do that. And then um, in terms of every, Every other day dosing, which 90% of people watching this is what you want to do to feel your best, be your best, and avoid spikes. And also for performance, uh, what you're going to want to be doing is every other day, 29 gauge half inch as long as you're not fat. All right, guys, that's Spartan. Stay safe, stay healthy. Uh, keep the questions coming. Hope you're loving the videos. Comment below what you want me to talk about next. Boom. And we are out of here.